Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, tonight's video is going to be a, a rather short video, or at least I hope it's short, I plan for it to be short, showing you how to fix a stuck shutter in a Minolta Hi-Matic uh, rangefinder camera. The instructions for this video will apply to the Hi-Matic 9, the Hi-Matic 7, the Hi-Matic 7S, and a little bit to the Hi-Matic 11 rangefinder camera. The main weak point to these cameras is that the shutter can sometimes stick. And this is caused by oil migrating from the shutter to the shutter blades. And when the oil accumulates, it causes them to stick a little bit. Uh, unsticking them is not a, a really big deal. You don't really have to do a lot of disassembly to, to clean them up. And uh, I'll show you how to do it in this video. Uh, to do this job, you'll need uh, some simple tools. Uh, you'll need a slotted screwdriver, like this one here. Uh, you may need a spanner, lens spanner, like this one here. It's not necessary that you have one of these, depending on how tight the locking ring is. Uh, if you don't have a lens spanner tool like this, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers with the points ground a little bit sharp so they will fit into the slots inside of the retaining ring. Uh, you will need a little bit of uh, lighter fluid or uh, paint thinner, uh, any kind of thin solvent which evaporates quickly. Uh, you'll also need a blow brush or some compressed air. Uh, this is helpful, it's not uh, absolutely necessary, but it does help uh, speed the process along a little bit. I use this, I'm not sure where my uh, rubber squeeze blow brush is at, but if I had that, uh, that would work just as well. And another uh, convenient thing to have is a few uh, clean cotton swabs. And these are 100% cotton swabs, which I buy at the local 7-Eleven here. So uh, let's take a break for a moment and then we'll get started. Okay, uh, the first step to the job is removing the lens retaining ring. And the first thing I do uh, before I take it apart is I take my lighter fluid and I apply it to uh, the threads of the filter ring. And this makes it much, much easier to remove the filter ring with my uh, spanner here. All I really have to do is kind of just uh, give it a quick start. Uh, I really wouldn't need, for this particular camera, that to turn quite easy without even ha uh, with much effort. And I just turn it off the rest of the way using uh, the slotted screwdriver or my thumbnail. Okay. So the next thing we have to do is we have to lift out the lens name plate and this contains the uh, light cell for the light meter and behind that is a plastic spacer and down here is a tab which uh, slides through the slot where you adjust the film speed for the camera. So what I'll do is I will uh, lift this out. It usually comes, well, the easiest way is just to flip it over upside like this and let it fall out. As I lift it up, uh, you will see uh, the plastic spacer here, and you will see the nameplate assembly with the spacer. And what we need to do to access the shutter blades to clean them is we need to remove the front lens element group. So I have a slotted spanner here, and what I will do is I will find the slots. and just give it a little bit of a turn. If I don't, didn't have a, a lens spanner to do the job, and it's not necessary to have a lens spanner, I would just use a pair of needle nose pliers like this and just squeeze a little bit and turn counterclockwise and that would loosen it up. And I simply turn it uh, leftwards until it comes out. Uh, this is also uh, a good uh, way or a good method to cleaning the inside of the lens elements. The inside of the rear element and the inside of the front element. If you are, uh, if you bought a camera and there's fungus or haze or dirt on the inside of the lens. Uh, what I would do to, uh, to do, to clean the inside of the lens, I would set the shutter speed to B and set the aperture to the widest setting, charge the shutter, and then uh, open the shutter and clean the inside the lens elements. In this case, what we're doing is simply uh, trying to unstick the shutter. So what I'll do is I'll take my lighter fluid and apply quite a lot to the end of a cotton swab. I will charge the shutter and then I will wipe the fluid around 
on the shutter blades and as you can see now they're moving. They were stuck on this uh, camera before I got started. I should have demonstrated that before I began. I'll go ahead and I'll wipe a little bit more on there. I don't really want to actually pour the, the lighter fluid on the shutter blades because I, I don't want to get too much of the fluid inside here. That tends to cause the oil to move around inside and can sometimes make a bigger mess. And what we don't want to do is make a bigger mess than what we already have. So uh, once the shutter is moving, uh, I'll go ahead and I'll use my blow brush to make sure that uh, everything is dry and that the shutter is working smoothly. Then I will go ahead and reassemble the camera. What I want to do first is thread the lens element back in the front and I need to make sure that I don't pinch the wires between the lens element and the inside of the lens housing. When it's bottomed out, I will tighten it just a little bit with my lens spanner. And once again, if I don't have a lens spanner, I can tighten a little bit with a pair of needle nose pliers. The front end lens elements in these cameras are never tight, which is a good thing. Some other cameras, they're incredibly tight and take a lot of work to remove. The next thing we need to do is replace the uh, faceplate and uh, light meter element. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to push it so that uh, the tab comes through the slot in the bottom of the lens. I can kind of see it here. There you see it fall out. And then I want to put in this uh, plastic spacer between the light meter and the lens. So I just slide it in like so. And I wiggle it and it fits flush. And I want to make sure that it sits nice and flat and level, that it's not up on one side or too far down on the other side. Otherwise, um, when you go to set the film speed, the dial won't turn properly. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, filtering and I'm going to put some more lighter fluid all around, get it nice and wet. And then thread it back on like so. And that's quite tight. I don't actually even need the lens spanner to put this on or take it off. So it's in place and uh, everything seems to be working A-OK. -okay. All right, uh, that's it. Uh, this repair took, uh, I guess, about six or seven minutes so far, so not really difficult to do. Uh, if you are uh, interested in seeing more videos about other vintage Japanese cameras, I have a lot of uh, different videos available and I'll be posting more soon. Uh, if you're interested in buying a vintage Japanese camera, I sell these at my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com, as well as my Etsy and eBay stores. Uh, please check the description below the video for links to my stores. Uh, if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.